I'd like to do an example of linear correlation and along with that its associated linear regression equation. Hopefully you've read the background information in the textbook and you have a basic idea what's going on and your only problem is dealing with that ridiculous formula that's given in the textbook. Well, I'm certainly not going to use that formula. I'm going to use my calculator. This little calculator here, the TI-30XIIS and a lot of other calculators that deal with statistics can calculate the, the specific values that we need in order to do linear correlation and a regression equation. So I want to show you how to do that. Here's the example we're going to do. Can crickets really predict the temperature? Well, uh, a uh, biologist wanted to know the answer to that, so he collected some data. And here's what he found out. I made it in, in form. And this, this problem is also exactly like this in the textbook. He counted the number of chirps a cricket made in a minute. And that's over here on the, the left column. And then he recorded the actual temperature at that time. And he did this for eight different times, eight different minutes. On the left, the number of chirps. On the right, the actual temperature. The temperatures range from, what's it go, from 60, 69.7 up to a high of 93.3. .3. And the uh, number of chirps goes from 864 to 1200. The question is, as these values increase, do these values increase at a more or less constant rate. Now it doesn't have to be the same rate that these values increase by, but both of these need to increase at some current, each have their own current rate. Is it true? Is there a linear correlation? And remember, correlation does not mean causality. Obviously we're not saying that because a cricket chirps this much it's causing the temperature to go up. No, we're simply saying there, there might appear to be a relationship between these numbers and these numbers, in that if these numbers increase at a certain rate, these numbers also increase at a probably different but steady rate. So let's determine that. How do we do it? We need to find the R value. Okay? Now, before we do that, let's take a look at one of the tables in, in our text. This is table A-6. Let me bring it up a little bit so we'll get in focus a little later. This is A-6. It's a little table. It's in our, in our uh, eight pages of formulas and tables. And this is a threshold table. This table tells me a lowest possible value for uh, an R calculated from a set of data the lowest possible value that we can come up with and still have a significant linear correlation. Now you should know from reading the text that some linear correlation is weak, some is moderate, and some is strong. And a positive correlation goes anywhere from 0 to 1, where 1 is an exact perfect correlation. Well, from table A-6, we have a sample size of eight crickets, so we're using n equals eight, and we're going to use a significance level of 0 0.05. Okay, and so let's find out what our threshold is. Well, from this table, let me bring it up here. There's eight, n is eight, and 0 0.05 and 0 0.01, we're going to use 0 0.05 significance level. So 8 is 0 0.707, all right? So 0 0.707. That means there will be a significant linear correlation if our R value that we come up with, if it is bigger than 0 0.707, okay? So let's find out what the R value is and we're going to use the calculator. Here are my data values. I'll go through them. I recommend you go through these two at the same time. First thing we have to do is go into statistics mode. 
So I hit the second function key, data key, that puts me in statistics mode. If I got to turn the calculator off first, I guess. Okay, there we go. Now, it asks us to choose between one variable and two variables. Well, I've got two variables. I've got chirps per minute and I've got temperature. So this is two variable data and we push enter. All right, and now I want to enter the data, so I push the data key. And it's prompting me for my first x sub 1 value, and that's going to be my chirps. So that's 882, and I use the down arrow key to, to enter that. And now notice, it's not prompting me for the frequency, as it would for one variable data. It's prompting me for the y value that's, that's related to that x value. And that's, this is the temperature, that's 69.7 degrees. And I'll again push the down arrow key to enter that. Now it's prompting me for x sub 2, and again I'll put 1188, enter that. And I'm being prompted for the next value, which is 93.3 degrees, 93.3. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and enter that myself. And you can look at the, the data values if you like, and enter them if you want to. Here are the remaining... Uh, six pairs of data.